Hey guys, how are you doing today? I have another Project Euler video here for you. Uh, I'm doing a little bit different kind of recording of the windows here just so I don't have to mess with window focuses and OBS and everything. So I put them up on the screen like this. It's a little bit different format. Also, I changed the color of the Euler background site to a little, little darker gray so that you could get contrast for the notepad window or else it just melt into the screen and look a little odd. But anyway, Let's get on with it, right? We're doing number seven, 10,000 first prime. I did do this a while back, as you can see. However, I've been busy with working everything, and now I want to get back into YouTube, because why not? But we're doing the 10,000 first prime by listing the first six prime numbers, two, three, five, seven, 11, and 13. We can see that the sixth prime is 13. What is the 10,000 and first prime number? Uh, which is right here, but we're gonna type it up again for the purposes of this video. I'm gonna start with our includes, because I did not pre-type this. I'm only gonna do a couple headers today. We're just gonna do the standard input-out header and the math header, which you'll see we're gonna use it for a little goodness a little bit later. Start with our main function here. Yes, I am still using Notepad, much to the chagrin of some people who have watched me, but oh well, they're gonna deal with it. It's, it's simple. And a concise, and it shows we don't really have giant programs. If we did, I'd be using Notepad++ or something else, but just still regular Notepad here. Uh, for the purposes of these videos, I think it's easier to follow along. But as far as our variables, we're just going to have four ints here. We're going to have the answer that we get at the end that we'll be resetting when we find a prime number. We're going to get the number we're currently on to check if it's a prime. We're going to have a counter from, say, 0, 1 to 10,001, because we need the 10,000 first. And we're gonna have a flag, which I could make a boolean, but I'm just gonna do ints, because I already have ints. We'll keep it to four ints and, you know, small and concise, right? That's the C way. But the flag will be on or off, depending if the number is a prime or not, and we want to count it, and so on and so forth. We're gonna initialize our flag and counter to zero, which is just count, not counter. And we're going to initialize the number and answer to 1 to start off. We start on 1. But this will all be done in a little main while loop here. While count is less than 10,001. So we're going from 0 to 10,001, effectively, to count all the prime numbers up until the 10,001st. Um, to start off, we're going to initialize our flag to 0 which means the number we're on is a prime number. Current number is a prime number, I'll just put current. Question mark. So we're gonna have it initialized to zero, and then if we turn the flag to one, we're gonna say, or any number other than zero, but for this purpose, we'll use it like a boolean, just put it, put it to one, that means the number will not be a prime. We'll do a couple of checks. We'll see if the number is 1. It's not a prime. For the purposes of this Euler, it starts at 2, so we're going to say, you know, 1 is not a prime. So we're going to set off the flag. We're going to see if the number is even. That being, if it is the number modulus 2 is 0, so the number divided by 2 has, a, has no remainder. That means it is an even number, and thus we'll also set off the flag. But then after that, for the purposes of this specific problem, if the number is 2, we are counting 2 as a prime number, so we're just going to set the flag back to 0. Which should only go off once for the first prime, but we're just putting it there. So it is a little bit extra overhead there, but oh well. That's just... that's alright. This program will be small enough, it won't really matter. It's not Enterprise or anything. Um, but the reason we included the math header was for this little line right here. We're going to set a boundary. That is the floor of the square root of the number we are currently on. So what this will do is take the square root of the number we're on and make it an integer if it is not an integer, <laughs> which is a bad way of saying that. But basically, if you take the square root of a number, let's say like square root of 20 or something, which I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but let's use, let's use a better example. If we have a number and the square root is, say, 2.5, We'll say square root of x is two and a half. If you take the floor of that, 
after you get it, it'll be 2 or 2.0. So we're just taking the integer value, rounding down. If the square root falls between like 2 and 3, it could be anywhere from 2.5 to like 2.9, repeating, whatever. It's going to make it 2. Until it equals 3, then it'll be 3. But that's all the floor, the floor does. It just takes the, the integer that's less than or equal to that number, the closest one. So typically you could think of that as like rounding down, right? But the reason we do that is because to check for a prime number, you really don't have to check past the square root of the number. Just sort of something you get from math over time. Um, but you can check, we, we're seeing here if the number is one, we set off the flag. If it's even, we set off the flag. Other than that, and it's not two once we go past two. All we have to check now is every odd number up into the number we're currently checking. Um, we can do that by checking up to the square root, but still checking every odd number up to the square root of the number we're currently checking, which is what this for loop will be for. So we're starting at three, because we're we already went through one and two, and if the number's even, we're gonna go up until the square root boundary we just set, and we're gonna add two to i every single time, going through all the odd numbers. You start at three, then go to five, seven, nine, so on and so forth. And while we're iterating through all those odd numbers up until the square root of the number, we're going to check if the number we're currently on is divisible by any of those odd numbers. So if number modulus i is zero, no remainder, then we're gonna set off the flag because it is not prime. Prime numbers are divisible by themselves in one. If the, if the number is divisible by any odd number up until its square root, then it's not prime. It would be divisible by more than one in itself. So we set off the flag. Uh, but those are all, those are the only checks we'll have to do. It's a pretty, pretty simple program. So we go at this point, we see if the flag is zero, which means the number is a prime. I'll just put it there for effect so we remember. If the flag is zero at this point, it is a prime number. We're gonna set the answer equal to that number. We're gonna increment the count because we found a prime number. And then for debugging purposes, and to get the answer at the end, we're just gonna print our number here and the current prime we're on. New line. So what we're doing is we're gonna get the, the current count and the current prime, and this just shows that, you know, you get the answer right, right? <laughs> but this will say like count equals one, prime equals two, count equals two, prime equals three, you know, so on and so forth. So we get to 10,001, which should be the 104743 there. Unless I did something horribly wrong and I have to debug it. Which is also important to learn as a programmer, but hopefully this this one's right. I have the browser in F11 mode if you see me, you know, doing that. It's because it's because it's in full screen. But this is all you need after we get the final check and we get the the prime that we're on, we increment the number. And we've already increment the count if we found a prime, so this will go until count is ten thousand and one. And we'll have the ten thousand first prime, it'll exit here and, and be done with it. So, just gonna save it right quick. We will compile. Oh. Answer one. Oh, I didn't put an equal sign there. I bet you were yelling at your screen the whole time, weren't you? Oh well. I gotta make one mistake. It's not me if there's not a mistake made, right? And then we'll just run. Healer seven. And we have, for some reason it turns black, but that's okay. We have the final prime, 10,001, prime 104743, which is this answer. You enter that in, you'll get a correct, hey, hey, because that's right. But that is all there is to it, guys, another pretty short one. I'm going to thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. We'll do number eight, which is the largest product in a series. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.